Sigmund Freud is a significant figure in continental philosophy, having had a lasting impact on Western culture and the history of ideas. His invention of psychoanalysis has significantly influenced Western culture and the way people think and speak about themselves. Freud's writings are rich and wide-ranging reflections on numerous aspects of the human condition, such as the workings of memory. Freud's work is often compared to the French psychoanalyst Jacques Lacan's extimacy, which refers to the core of a subject's structure that the conscious self cannot directly identify with and make its own. However, it is important to consider what sets Freud apart from Marx, Nietzsche, and other thinkers in the continental philosophical tradition, and what is distinctive about Freudian psychoanalysis with respect to post kantian European philosophy. Freud's concept of the unconscious is considered a crucial and unique contribution to the history of ideas, particularly in continental European philosophy. Psychoanalysis was born with the discovery of the unconscious in the late 1890s, and remains the defining object of inquiry for analysis as a particular discipline unto itself. Freud's elaborations of psychoanalysis draw much inspiration from other thinkers and disciplines, but it is important not to lose sight of the characteristics and features of the specifically Freudian unconscious that make it an absolutely unprecedented idea, distinct from its historical precursors. Freud's theory of the unconscious is not a mere biological materialist, but a scientistic reductionist in the mold of 18th century French monistic materialism. The psyche, including the unconscious, is not just mechanistic matter moved solely by efficient causes. The sexualized body image is a crucial mediating matrix conjoining soma and psyche. Freud's concept of drive, treep, depicts human beings as taking shape at the complex tangled intersection of body and mind, nature, and nurture. Freud's unconscious is determined from the beginning by any innate meaningful contents wired into the foundations of the psyche. In continental European psychoanalytic circles, the 1923 publication of The Ego and the It marks a transition from the first topography to the second topography, id, ego, and superego trinity. This shift in Freudian metapsychology poses is serious questions of translation, which hinge fundamental psychoanalytic issues with clinical, practical, theoretical, and philosophical implications. Unconscious phenomena frequently are on display out in the open, transpiring on the surface of quotidian reality in publicly visible words and deeds. On the Freudian account, consciousness itself is shaped by the unconscious the latter being woven into the fabric of the former. Freudian psychoanalysis has made significant strides in reconsidering the nature of being human in light of reflections on time. It emphasizes the timelessness of the unconscious, meaning that prior phases of development are not eliminated and replaced by subsequent phases of development. The Freudian unconscious is often misunderstood as a mind within the mind, but it does not think in the same manners and modes of thinking, as consciousness. Freud's theory of the unconscious is based on the statuses of reason and meaning in human existence. He hypothesizes that the psyche sometimes deviates from the rudimentary rationality embodied in the self-interested aiming at well-being, sabotaging its own pleasurable pursuits, and inflicting pain and suffering on itself. Unconscious cognition connects ideational representations and mental content, creating links between fragments of mental content, 
that consciousness would never think to link. Freud's early attempts to address hysteria therapeutically led him to propose the revolutionary thesis that not all of what is mental is conscious. He postulates a psychical body composed of images, words, and concepts, known as a body of Vorstelungen, responsible for the distribution of conversion symptoms across the body. Freud also suggests that there is a method to the madness, where if there is a discrepancy between a circumstance and someone's emotional response, there must be another circumstance, a repressed idea or memory, as the unconscious determinant in relation to which the response is justified and understandable. This idiosyncratic quasi-ed ash right parenthesis rationality, or the peculiar logics of mental processes typically unrecognizable to conscious cognition, is the basis for his axiomatic insistence that the mental and the conscious are not equivalent or synonymous with each other. Freud's theories on amorous and sexual lives, drives, the Oedipus complex, transference, perversions, fetishism, gender identity, and sexual difference reveal that these phenomena are not without their reasons, whether rational or irrational. From a Freudian perspective, ethical renunciations and sacrifices, contrary to superficial appearances, are not without pathological enjoyment. Freud's metapsychological theories display evidence of the influence of naturalistic science inspired materialism on his thinking. However, some reasons for rejecting the notion that Freud remains a committed psychophysicist include resonances between psychoanalysis and the materialisms developed by and after Marx and Friedrich Engels. Existentialism, a movement that began with Jean Paul Sartre, has evolved through various figures such as Kierkegaard, Fyodor Dostoevsky, Nietzsche, Franz Kafka. Martin Heidegger, Sartre, Albert Camus, and Samuel Beckett. Freud's analytic perspective is deeply indebted to existentialists, but his work is not a clinical recapitulation of Nietzschean philosophy. Freud's vision of the human condition is not deterministic, but rather a set of narratives about people being inherently ignorant puppets held by an invisible master called the unconscious. He believes that individuals are usually unaware of the degree to which their self-determined words and deeds are determined by influences operating below the level of conscious cognizance. Freud and Edmund Hussell share a debt to Brontano's teachings, with both appropriating Brontano's intentionality thesis which states that the mental is distinct from the physical, insofar as the former involves the mental. However, transcendental phenomenology acts a proper unconscious, and is more promising for analysis, than existential phenomenology. Freudian psychoanalysis, has been seen as useful theoretical tools for political analysis and critique, by several 20th century figures and movements in the Marxist tradition. Theodore Adorno's 1950 study The Authoritarian Personality attempts to sketch a psychoanalytically informed portrait of an individual character structure susceptible to fascist style authoritarianism. Melanie Klein, founder of Object Relations Theory, emphasizes the centrality of fantasy-mediated relationships with objects and others, as the driving motor mechanisms of psychical development. Freud does not shy away from offering evidence for his metapsychological claims about the organization and operation of the psyche. But his analyses are always unique experiences taking shape between singular subjects in intimate circumstances. Feminism has been a significant topic in Freudian psychoanalysis, with feminist thinkers ranging from outright rejection to enthusiastic appropriation. 
Freud's work on sexual difference and gender identities is a departure from his predecessor's work, as it examines the complex relationships between sexuality and subjectivity. He treats female hysterics not as irrational creatures of emotion, but as proper human beings with rich mental lives that exhibit the rhyme and reason of psychical logics uncovered by analysis. Freud is not the simple minded biological determinist that many, including many feminist critics, make him out to be on the basis of flawed partial interpretations of his writings. French feminism and feminist thinkers drawing from this particular strain of feminism are the most favorably disposed toward Freud and his legacy, especially his legacy in France as influenced by Lacan. Feminists of diverse outlooks maintain a nuanced multifaceted dialogue with Freud. Simultaneously pointing to limitations plaguing his conceptions of femininity, while also deploying his ideas in projects striving to reconceptualize the status of sexual difference. The link between psychoanalysis and structuralism is evident in Lacan's return to Freud during the first six years of his annual seminar, 1953-59 and in contemporaneous writings. Post structuralism, which emerged in the late 1960s, involves a shift in focus from the imaginary and the symbolic to the real. With Lacan turning his attention to things of the real, that impact the imaginary symbolic structures of reality without themselves being captured by or reducible to such structures. Deconstructionism and psychoanalysis can be perceived as mirror image inversions of each other, with texts interpreted by deconstructionists and analysts often differing.